Good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. So tonight I am going to be doing a Throwback Thursday video. Uh, we're going back to 1995. Now I've already posted this video once and uh, I did it without doing any voiceover so there was a lot of things that should have been explained in the video and they weren't explained. I apologize for that and I know a lot of you wanted a lot of information in the comments so I thought, you know what, let's just revisit this video. Uh, we'll re-upload it with um, the voiceover. So uh, what you're going to see here is my dad back in uh, 1995 digging mint roots on my Uncle Larry's farm. Uh, the first tractor you're going to see is a John Deere 4850 with a mint root digger. So uh, let's get into the video and I'll explain the process as things go. And uh, we also see a John Deere 4955 with a mint planter uh, planting uh, mint roots. So uh, we'll explain all that when we get in the video. So let's get started. All right, so here we go. We're digging mint roots. Uh, Mom, hold the camera a little steadier there for us. So uh, what we got here is we have a custom built uh, root digger. Now these weren't manufactured by uh, big companies. They were just kind of manufactured by uh, different fabricating shops. So the idea of, of what's going on here is in the fall uh, we would ridge plow the mint roots into ridges and then the root digger would go along and basically dig the roots out like potatoes. Uh, the the chains as the, as the dirt and roots went up the chains uh, there were shakers under the chains and it would actually shake the roots out. Uh, so you can see this wagon is almost full. Uh, they got pretty heavy when they got full because there is still some dirt uh, with the roots. It's kind of, the roots kind of remind me of almost not, they're, they're a little bigger than like grass sod, you know. They're, they're nice mats of their clumps. So what dad's going to do is he'll stop here pretty soon. He'll run back and he'll unhook the back wagon and he'll pull the full wagon to the end of the field. And then he'll come back and he'll hook back up to that empty and he'll take off again. So if you kind of hit the clutch, you could get the pile to roll forward a little bit and roll down in the front corners of the wagon and fill it a little more. That's what he's trying to do there. Uh, Dad used to get on the wagon and he'd fork the pile back some and uh, fill them pretty full. You'd have to be pretty careful because you would get a very, very big load on them wagons and you'd split the rims out. So as you can see here, the old 4850 doesn't have the loader brackets on it yet. It didn't get the Western Dorf loader till 1996. I just uh, noticed that while I was watching these videos. Uh, if you watch my last video of planting beans, it's the same 4850 down on my grandpa's farm. But in that video, that was a 96 and it had the loader brackets on it. I ran that tractor quite a bit through my middle school and high school years. My dad put all the hours that were pretty much on that tractor on it. There's my dad. He's going to pull that hitch pin out. Those were Knowles running gears, real heavy running gears. Now my dad actually built 16 mint tubs on those running gears and four of them, the tub top was removable. They had a steel floor and you'd put the sideboards on them to make the root wagons out of them. There's me running around. That was a tile trench, a uh, tile had been re installed in there. Uh, here comes Paul Johannan on Alice Chalmers tractor that was his tractor and he'd bring it over to my uncle's all the time. and. Uh, he always said to stretch her legs because at this time I believe he was retired from farming and this was one of his favorite Alice Chalmers tractors. Now I can't for the life of me remember the number of that. I'm not sure if it's like a 190 XT. I think it's bigger than that. But Paul loved that tractor. He would pull mint tubs with it, pull root wagons and stuff with it. Nice old tractor. Ah, we can't get close enough to see what it was. You Alice Chalmers guys will be able to look at it and tell me exactly what it is. But uh, Paul's going over there to help Dad get hooked back up. Now, Dad also did run a uh, dump hose back to the wagon, and in some cases, we would just dump in the field and uh, 
reload the roots on uh, semis. Uh, my uncle sold a lot of roots up into Michigan, Wisconsin. Semis would come down and get them, and we'd load them out of the field. Uh, them them uh, telescoping hitches got dirt in them from the uh, top conveyor, and they would always be hard to slide out. We'd have to uh, stop and clean them out every now and then to make them slide again. Oh, there's an airplane flying over. I don't know why mom's so obsessed with uh, videos of airplanes. Seems like she does in every video. Okay, so dad's going to get started here again. He's going to get going. And I think at some point mom actually gets in with him and uh, videos from inside the track. Yep, there we go. Mom's inside the tractor with him. So now you can see the uh, dirt and mint roots going up. And they're getting shaken out. Now you did want to leave a little dirt with them. You didn't want to get them completely clean. So in, in a lot of times, some of the farms were big enough that uh, we would plant, you know, 20 acres of mint on them and then uh, let that grow and then that would be the root stock for the following years and we would actually dig on the same farm, just dump them and then uh, load them in the planter and keep planting more acres of that farm. So with having that dump hose from the tractor all the way back to the wagon, Dad could just pull up to where he wanted to dump and then dump it and take off again. Wouldn't have to mess with, you know, multiple wagons. There's a lot of, there's a lot of roots to dig in that farm in that field right there. Yeah, that was definitely a, a bigger field right there. Now, for those of you that are um, familiar with this area, this is the 10 and 421 uh, intersection here in San Pierre, where he's digging at. There's my head in the way, like usual. So basically the ridge plow basically was moldboard plows put together. You had a right hand bottom and a left hand bottom and you put them together and they would form a, a V plow and then you just put in a three point hitch with a tractor and make two ridges at a time, I think it was, and you pull it with a tractor and it would form the ridges. So there's uh, Dad and I. I'm up there on the mint planter with Dad. You had to uh, fork it all level because basically you would fill the box and the height of the mint roots in the box would basically be pretty much your population so to speak there was times that we would only fill the box maybe 24 inches all the way across and then there was times we'd fill it all the way to the top there's a beater in the front dad just kicked uh, that uh, cover open there and there's a beater in the front, and it shreds the mint roots as they slide forward. It's basically like a manure spreader kind of chains in the floor. It just slides the whole load forward, and as it does that, that beater's grinding them up into short pieces, and then they're dropping into four rows that are opened up with disc openers. Oh, what do I got there? Do I have a duck call? I think I have a duck call or something. I don't know where I come up with a duck call. Yeah, I got a duck call. Forty-nine fifty-five, I think, was fairly new in this video. I mean, probably almost brand new in this video, actually. So you'll see some views underneath the mint planters. My mom's Red Explorer that she had. I think she had every color and every variation of Ford Explorer there ever was. So that woods is no longer there. It's one big field. So uh, first year of mint is considered row mint uh, because you can still row it out when you see it grow. And then at the end it becomes meadow mint because it's all filled in between the rows and kind of looks like a hay field. Nope, we're not under the mint planter. I think we're in the tractor. 
Mom needs to zoom in a little bit. I don't know why we're so close. Give her a second here. Oh, there she found a button. All right. So you always jab the pitchforks in there, so you kind of had an idea of where the end of the roots were. Uh, when you got to where the pitchforks were towards the front, that's when you stopped. Sometimes uh, you go a little too far and a beater would grab a pitchfork and suck it in. We had a hose on the end there, on the end of the shaft for the beater, so you could see it and make sure the beater was turning. For some reason, the cover's missing off the roller chain in the front. There used to be a cover there. Probably had to take it off for some maintenance or something. If I remember right, this mint planter was built in, like, Wisconsin. I can remember the stickers, the decals on the side of it. And I, I can't remember the name of the company that actually built it, but I can remember, I believe it was Wisconsin. Had square holes there in the front. You could watch the roots drop from the cat, uh, tractor cab to make sure they were still coming through. Uh, Mom would focus down a little. Oh, now we're in the front of the tractor. Dad must be holding the camera because it's awfully uh, far to the right side of the tractor there. It's a little rough out there. Probably just dissed it. I don't think at this time. I don't think Uncle Larry had the uh, 726 soil finishers yet. Oh, there I am again. Oh, there we go. Got us a big pile in there to level out. I'm trying to help Dad, but the roots were heavy back when I was little. Oh, this is back when he still had the 1586 with the loader on it. I think Mom walks over there a little bit and gets a little video of that tractor. But as you can see, uh, the wheels that actually carry that planter, uh, they're the Diamond Tread tires, and uh, they were... You'll see it. Yeah, there's one. Uh, they're strategically placed not only to support the weight of the planter, but also to pack down the rows that it plants because you wanted good soil to root contact so the mint grew good. So the planter's got the same markers on it, just like corn or bean planter. Nothing different there. Hey, Brandon, if you get a little more roots, you could help Dad a little faster there and throw them right off the side of the planter. That's a good boy. Well, Dad's doing it, too. I would say my dad was probably, oh, probably, let's see, he's 60, what does he know? I, I can't remember. Huh. Can't remember how old my dad is right now. 58? Yeah, 58. So he's in his 30s, early 30s back then. He's just a young guy, my age, basically. So this is where Paul is actually taking the mint roots to and dumping them, which is not far from the field where dad was digging them out of. He's about got her leveled out. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the name of the planter. Okay. Fred Mint. Yep. There we go. That was a quick glance. You can freeze that and look at it if you want. I'm glad Mom got that on camera. But as as you can see here on the back, you can see the two drag chains. There's one on each side that uh, drag the mint roots forward. I wish Mom would have got... Ah, oh, yeah. She's going to get a little better view. There's all the wheels underneath. So there was a few guys that custom built these in their shop around here, and the biggest that I know of was an 8-row. There was one 8-row. There's the old 1586. Dad built them forks to put in a bucket, so there's Nipsco Power Plant over there. But anyways, Dad built those forks to go in the bucket to uh, be able to get uh, larger amounts of roots per bucket full. 
He also built an ice set for the 4850 for that loader. So here we can see underneath we got uh, our disc openers in the front that plow the trench open. And some of these had like a potato plow in the front. And uh, the, the boots themselves of the planter actually push it open a little. Then you have some closing discs under there. And then you have just some firming wheels like off of a corn planter. And those also help keep the depth. You can see one of the slats above my head on the drag chain. But yeah, the roots just drop through each one of them boots and go out on the ground. Or in the ground, I should say. Definitely an interesting planter. Uh, if I remember correctly, a lot of this mint uh, planting equipment that you see here was also used in the large strawberry farming industry. Um, I believe these planters and the root digger were uh, repurposed for strawberries also. Now there was some self-propelled uh, potato diggers that were revamped and made to uh, dig mint roots. I know there was a couple of them roaming around here at one time. So there dad goes. I think he can probably get down and back before he needs to refill. Well, maybe maybe two rounds. I can't remember. It planting mints kind of a labor intense process. I mean, it's a it's a lot of work. Uh, takes a lot of time to plant mint. Back when I was uh, in middle school and high school. Um, we had changed a lot of things. We had run. We were running three mint planters at one time. I uh, had a little 244J John Deere payloader that we used to load mint ruts with. Kind of, kind of doubled down on equipment and uh, hit it hard. All of us and got it done. Um, but back in back in this time, it was basically I think uh, just my uncle Larry, my dad and uh paul on the farm my cousins weren't much older than i was so they they did a lot i will say they worked their asses off but then as we all got older as far as me and my cousins we we started uh helping a lot The thing about mint is it's a, uh, it basically takes up the slack time of farming that grain farmers have. You know, it's, it's, uh, in the late fall and early winter, you're plowing it under, uh, in the spring, you're, you're planting it before your corn and soybeans. And then all summer long, you're, uh, pretty much in harvest with it. Uh, by the time, um, early summer comes by the time you get the still ready all the equipment ready you're into mint harvest already and by the time you're done with mint harvest you're you're starting to cut beans a lot of times we were uh we were uh chopping mint in the morning and distilling it and uh cutting beans by the afternoon and uh that gets to be quite a bit of work all in one day trying to fit all that in I think the latest we ever uh, second cut mint uh, was into like uh, October and it was snowing. That was the latest we had ever pushed it on the second cutting. Some farms you could get a second cutting off of if it had some irrigation on it. Other farms you couldn't. Definitely was fun though. I will say that. Probably probably some of the best time i've had farming is probably mint i really enjoyed it loved it and i've got i've got uh video 
that I will show you from uh, like 2004, 2005 of Dad and I chopping mint. And uh, those will be coming on down the line here in Throwback Thursday, so be looking forward to them. I got the brand new John Deere 8420 in the one video. I love that tractor. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys finish watching the video here. I think I explained everything there is to explain, and you can just uh, go on and enjoy the rest of it. Um, so thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate you watching these Throwback Thursday videos. I know they're not doing extremely well on YouTube, but uh, I mean, for those of you who do watch them and enjoy them, I'm going to keep doing them. So, uh, they're not, uh, any record breakers on views, but they're still enjoyable. And I know a lot of guys are getting enjoyment out of them, guys and girls, seeing the different processes. You know, because mint's not something that's grown everywhere. Uh, you know, it's, I know there's some down Texas area, or some up in Wisconsin, uh, some, I believe, out in, like, Washington, Oregon area, an interesting thing is everybody's mint equipment is a little bit different. Um, you know, I've seen everything from uh, like semi-trailer type mint wagons to four-wheel wagons like we used in, in these videos. And then I've, I've even seen some roll-off containers like used for dumpsters that were converted to mint wagons and or mint tubs and things like that. So... It's just interesting to see how it's done in different places. I know the Chinese, they grow some mint up in the mountains and they distill it and stuff and put it in water bottles and put it on the market or however they do it. But uh, I think the video is about to end anyways. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it.